Welcome to a day of prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Together, let's engage in relationship with Christ through prayer, faith, and His Word. Good morning and welcome. You're listening to a day of prayers morning Bible study and we're so glad you could join us. But before we get into the word, let's take a moment and pray. Lord, we just thank you for our listeners and our partners, Lord. We just thank you for everything that you're doing in our lives, Lord, and that you bless them bountifully, Lord. And Lord, we also just thank you for everything that you continue to do, Lord, and that you just continue to show yourself around the world, Lord, that you continue to prove yourself faithful, Lord. Lord, we also just thank you for your Holy Spirit and that he is with us each and every day, Lord, and that he never leaves us nor forsakes us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Good morning and welcome, everyone. We are excited to have you with us as we continue to study the Word of God. And in this, we are studying the book of Acts. We're in chapter 11, and this morning we'll be covering verses 19 through 30. So can I get a volunteer to read that section of scripture, please? I will. All right, promise. Now those who were scattered after the persecution that arose over Stephan traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, preaching the word to no one but the Jews only. But some some of them were men from Cyprus and Cyrene, who when they had come to Antioch spoke to the Hellenists, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. The news of these things came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent out Barnabas to go as far as Antioch. When he came and had seen the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged them all that with the purpose of heart they should continue with the Lord. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith, and a great many people were added to the Lord. Then Barnabas Barnabas departed from Tarsus to seek Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for a whole year they assembled with the church and taught a great many people, and the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. And in those days, prophets came from Jerusalem to Antioch. Then one of them, named Agabus, stood up and yes, stood up and showed by the Holy Spirit by the Spirit that there was going to be a great famine throughout all the world, which was all, which also happened in the days of Claudius Caesar. Then the disciples, each according to his ability, determined to send relief to the brethren dwelling in Judea. This they did also, and sent it to, sent it to the elders by the hand of Barnabas and Saul. Amen. Oh, amen. All right, well, at this time, I'm going to open the floor. And allow each of you the opportunity to share what the Holy Spirit is speaking and ministering to you. And, of course, to ask any questions if you have them. So who'd like to begin? I guess I will again. Mm -hmm. Go for it. (laughs) Um, One thing that I found interesting here was that um, first that we see Barnabas when he went to go look for Saul. I found that interesting because we see in previous chapters that after they try to kill um, kill Saul inside of Jerusalem, they sent him out to Tarsus, back to where he came from. And what I found interesting about that was that Bar- the first person that Barnabas wanted to go seek out was Saul. He And I found it interesting because it correlated directly to what his ministry was later to become, that he was supposed to go to the Gentiles and go to those people and other kingdoms and countries besides just judea and another thing that i found interesting here was that it said the apostles determined to send relief to all who were in judea and i was originally considering that and asking the lord why that was the case like were they not in there were they somewhere else around the world were they doing other things and how the lord showed me that while there was some in there, they were also being spread out across different regions. They weren't all just conglomerated inside of one space and just staying there doing nothing. Um, but they were had work that needed to be attended to and that it needed to be done. 
and how also with the relief they gave to Judea, Judea no longer was just considered the region that was originally Israel. This applied to different areas of the world because we see Barnabas and Saul were sent out to different countries like Antioch, um, different cities, I should say, like Antioch and places. But these weren't in Israel, but they gave it into the hands of Barnabas and Saul, meaning that this was no longer just in Israel's territory. Also, another thing that I found interesting was that even here, um, as we've been talking in previous discussions, up until this point, all the um, Christians had only been talking and preaching to other Jews. There was no going to the Gentiles and preaching the word except for what Peter did at this point. And I found I found that interesting as well and how hmm. even with this, there was, I say, a groundwork being laid. This was not for the Gentiles. This was not the first time hearing about the gospel because I always ask the Lord, how is it that we see that most times when people hear something, they don't tend to listen, but they're instantly able to receive it and had great joy inside of it. And the Lord was showing me that this was not just the first time they had heard these words. While it may not have been spoken directly to them, they may have overheard or eavesdropped as to what was being said. And which correlates to previous chapters, like when Samaria, um, we see that reason one of the reasons that Philip was able to accomplish what he did in the city of Samaria is that um, in the Gospels we see that Jesus already went there before. He already, already went to Samaria to go preach the word and mm -hmm. go start his ministry because that's what the Lord called him. So this was not a first time occurrence for them. So they had been exposed to the word um, in some way, shape or form, <coughs> exposed to um, the, the coming of the kingdom or salvation, the opportunity there in some yes. ways. Um, that is God's character. Yes. Go well, ahead, my love. Let's also recognize the word has not gone forth, I'll say, to the Gentiles yet. Officially. Yes. Officially, right? Yes. But seeds have been sown. <clears throat> um, we have... Oh, go ahead, honey. Um, they're still speaking and preaching and teaching Jews, right? That was That's in the yes. verse 19. And even when it talks about speaking to the Hellenists, those are the Greek Jews. Yes. So just, just want to make it clear for the listeners. They're still... I'll say primarily speaking and teaching and preaching to the Jews. Yes. Mm -hmm. To Jewish people. Um, Saul will be the first official, I'll say, um, evangelist, if you will, to the Gentiles because of yes. the rejection of the word of the Lord to the Jews, ones that had grown up and with the word and hearing the word, but not hearing it in the way that our Lord and Savior Jesus came and brought it in to clear up any misunderstanding that the people and us, and I just mean people as a whole, have had about the word. Mm -hmm. So... Peter did minister to Cornelius, who would be a, a Gentile, but there was an official, like, um, starting of a consistent ministry in right. that way. Like, the Lord wanted to do that, but they, they probably weren't certain or ready for Going that to a yet. foreign country and ministering to people that were not of, I'll say, Jewish descent. Okay. Right, that had heard the word constantly in their home and in their lives and synagogue or... Amen. And, um, you know, just... Uh, there's something that Le Charles is right about God sowing seeds Amen. into other places that the word will be sent at a future time Absolutely. because there were still people that um, I'll say foreign peoples that received healing or ministry were ministered to during the Lord's um, ministry Amen. on the earth. And then they took it back where they belong. And then when the day of Pentecost came, there were proselytes or whomever there, and then they took it back mm -hmm. where they came. So the, the stirring that the Lord was doing in the hearts and minds of people, I believe, was already happening because that's just who our God is. Absolutely. You look back in the, the Old Testament, and there's a reason that we always bridge the New and the Old Testament because they go together. There's not two separate Bibles that were smashed together. This is one God speaking, declaring the end from the beginning, so they all go together. So so can we say it in this way? There's a, an Old Testament and an Older Testament? 
Yes. Because <laughs> at this it, point. It, it's 2,000 years old, right? It's clearly not new at this point, right? So, Correct. yes, I know we call it the New Testament, but it's clearly old, and it is built upon the Older Testament. Right, and the, the Word is one. God is the Amen. same God throughout the Scriptures. But even even at the time of the, the what we call the Old Testament is how it's described in the Bible. Amen. Um, again, Abraham wasn't a Jew, but the, God, the, right. the New Testament specifically says that the gospel was preached to him. Exactly. Um, but then you have prophets like Balaam. Right. Now, although he went wet, wayward, right. I was going to say way left, but he went wayward in his response to God, he was still a vessel used by God who was not a Jew. Mm-hmm. He was not a Jew. Amen. So the Lord was already sending out word. You think about Abraham's children that he had with Keturah. You think mm-hmm. about um, Esau and the people that came from him. That They exactly. were still taught the same word that was preached to Abraham was preached to them because Abraham taught them. Amen. That's what the Lord um, acknowledges. Whether so, they chose to walk in it or not. Correct. But the seeds were sown and there's always somebody whose heart is going to lean towards God, <laughs> whose the Lord is reaching their hearts, even, whether we see it or not. Yeah, and we brought that up with even Cyrus, right? The Lord correct. said very, or King Cyrus, Ruth right? That's my servant. Exactly. Um, Rahab, Rahab, she just heard the word of them coming out of Egypt and what happened, and mm-hmm. she believed God. Amen. The the children of Israel, the spies, didn't preach the word to her. She's like, hey, we're already waiting on you. I've already, their hearts already melted touched 40 God years with ago. her faith, and they just, before they even showed up, mm-hmm. they're wandering around somewhere different. And she's like, we already knew this belonged to you. We already been waiting. Our hearts melted 20 years ago. What, how can I help you? Mm-hmm. She had already believed in the Lord at that point. So to say that it was waiting specifically on someone to preach for the, the seeds to be sown, because you're right, it does take time for us to hear like the seed has to be sown. Amen. It has to be watered. It has to have time to grow. And Absolutely. then God gives the increase and he brings the harvest. So at the appropriate time, you know, the, the preachers are going forth. The mm-hmm. preachers are important because Romans chapter 10 tells us how can they hear unless a preacher be sent. Um, and with that being said, the way God chooses to, send that word and put the seeds and plant the seed, all of that kind of stuff that belongs to the Lord. So he's always working, whether we know it or think he's doing it or not. Mm-hmm. Amen. But Charles, did you have something else, sweetheart? Not at this time. Okay. Promise? Oh, I see you smiling. Go ahead, honey. Okay. So first, Lord, remind me of Matthew 11, Matthew 9, sorry, not Matthew 19, Matthew 11, um, in verses tw- 20 through 24, and how I was talking about the cities that if the great works are done, so of the Hebrew cities that the Gentile cities would have repented long ago. Amen. Was and it then, Tyre and Sidon? And what then the Lord thing? also reminded me of um, Tyre is inside of Phoenicia, as is Sidon, mm-hmm. Antioch in Syria, Tarsus is in Sicilia. And the Lord remind me of how it said that Barnabas was inside of Jerusalem. How, if you look at the distance, he would have to cover quite a few countries to, if he's going by land, he'd have to cover quite a few countries just to get to that one spot. Mm-hmm. And so the Lord reminded me of how that what that that was something that the Lord had said for him to do, and that was ordained by the Lord. And He was showing me that that they weren't just going. Oh well, He's all the way inside a different country, so we're just gonna go by our own resources and try to do it that way. Mm. But that it was the Lord's way. It then what that He reminded me of inside of. For seeing how the children of Israel were calling out for a king, and how that's not what the Lord's perfect will was for them, but they kept insisting, and they're saying, "No, we're going to do it by our own resources." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You want, we want you to do our will, God, and bless it. This is our will, bless it. Um, so, how does that apply to you, sweetheart? And connect that with the scripture for me, uh, this section of scripture, please. And so, and it said that. It said they're scat. It said they're scattered through that the regions Phoenicia, Cyrene, and Cyprus. Mm-hmm. Um, Cyprus is an island. Okay. 
And so, Lord, showing me that that was also determination. They just didn't scatter. Um, they weren't going to scatter and just remain silent, but it also said that they were preaching, and great many believed in the word. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then the Lord showed me that when that it said they were in Antioch, there's also an Antioch inside of Ephesus, I think. Okay. Where's Ephesus at? He's looking Sorry, at it's map. in Galatia. Okay. Which is where? What what modern day country? Turkey. Okay. Like shoo. <laughs> we got it at the buzzer. <laughs> Go ahead, Teddy. So uh, I like how you brought that up, right? For a couple of reasons. Um first, uh, I wanted to uh, feel led to discuss Barnabas, right? What do we see as far as his his nature and character and i'll say even attributes isn't barnabas the one they call the son of consolation yes yes okay so he's an encourager he was an encourager yep Uh uh-huh um but it says in verse specifically verse 24 he was a good man full of the holy spirit and faith mm -hmm. do we see this consistency in I'll say the pattern, the characteristics, the qualities that the Lord is looking for. Like in Stephen, yes. when they choose oh, the seven. Okay, yes. Thank you very much, Layla. Exactly like that. But then, because of those things, the Lord selected him, put it on his heart, to travel to Tarsus to seek out Saul. Right? Yes. So who will, who will later become paul but prior to that there was this demonstration or actually even after that they were in antioch for a period of time right teaching and training and equipping the people there to continue in the work but it says this very specifically and it's in verse 26 that Barnabas brought Saul to Antioch, right? and when he had found him, after he departed to Tarsus to get Saul, he had brought him to Antioch, so it was that for a whole year they assembled with the church. So we'll, we'll, we'll pause there for a second. Who's the church? Believers, the body of Christ. We are the church. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Everywhere we're at is church. Hey, hallelujah. If I'm the church, everywhere I go, I'm in church. I bring the church. I bring the church because... <laughs> I am the temple of the Lord. Mm -hmm. right? The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit live and dwell in me. And his hand is upon me. Right? That's what it starts with in verse 21. The hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. It wasn't because of them or what they were doing, except by allowing the Lord and his Holy Spirit to lead, to have his way, to minister, to reveal, and, and I'll say lead and guide them into all truth right yes but then it says how yeah they taught a great many people so many were impacted but then it says and the disciples were first called christians in antioch right mm. yes what does christian mean christ like exactly or follower of christ so the people in antioch denoted right were the first i'll say come up with a word <laughs> All right, that's, mm -hmm. that says these people are like Christ. They are like the Messiah. All right, they, they walk like him, they talk like him, they reflect his nature, character, and attributes in and through their lives. They notice that, the people at Antioch. And, and Christian, right, they were first called Christians at Antioch, is in a, a few other places in the Bible. It's in Acts when Saul, who becomes Paul, speaks to King Agrippa. And King Agrippa then says, you almost persuade me to become a Christian. Mm -hmm. Right? That's in uh, Acts 26, verse 28. And then Peter also mentions it. To find the verse in First Peter chapter 4, uh, talking about suffering. And in verse 16, it says, Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this manner. Amen. Right? The Lord 
as our God and we as his, his servants, his people, should be able to, should do anything that he says for us to do, right? He's not going to do or ask us to do anything outside of his will. But I mean, can you imagine Barnabas here? He asked Barnabas to go get Paul or Saul in Tarsus, mm -hmm. the, the one who persecuted the church, who it says right here at the beginning of verse 19, that was the reason they had traveled as far as Phoenicia, mm -hmm. Cyprus, and Antioch. Mm -hmm. So this is the exact person who they were running from that now they're told, well, Barnabas is told, and, and, was, and departed to go get him. To bring him to them. Let's, let's recall that Saul or Paul was rejected by the apostles. They didn't even want to meet with him. Initially. And and then, initially, yeah. Mm -hmm. But but we, we covered that in scripture, so I mm -hmm. want to bring that up. But now Barnabas is told, go get him. Mm. Right? Oh, yeah. Well, yes, we're... We know that the Holy Spirit is leading him because we don't have any well, good ideas. It, it in says our that, home. right? It says he's full of the, the Spirit mm -hmm. and of faith. So you see the leading of the Spirit and you see mm -hmm. Barnabas's faith in action. I'm going to go do, the, do this thing that the Lord is clearly leading him to do in faith and then bring him right there. And there's teaching, and, and many people are being, or I'll say, the lives are being changed mm -hmm. and hearts turn to the Lord. Amen. So we see the fruit of the Spirit in action, but we also see what the Lord is looking for, right? And you see that consistently throughout Scripture. Mm -hmm. And it's not something that you generate on your own. You cannot. This comes from loving God and agreeing with Him and allowing yourself to be led by Him. That's what you keep Amen. seeing them this basically what's happening, happening is that the Lord told me and I did. That's being led by the Holy Spirit. And then you go, yes, okay, God. And then you go and do whatever it is Holy Spirit is leading you to do. Amen. And that's the pattern example set forth in Christ. And Amen. for all of us. Amen. So let's stop there for today. Um, and with that, can I get a volunteer to close this out in prayer, please? I will. All right, Layla. Lord, we thank you for giving us strength to fulfill your word and your call on each and every one of our lives, God. We thank you for the ministry that you have given to each of us, Lord, that we can be a part of the grand and the good work that you're doing in the earth, Lord, that we can help bring about your promises that you have made to your people throughout the generations and to us, Lord. We thank you for your faithfulness and your kindness, Lord, and your compassion that you comfort us, Lord, that you guide us and that you lead us through your Holy Spirit, Lord, that you don't leave us wandering, Lord, into our own devices, Lord, but you love us and you hold us as a father to his child, God, that you nourish us, uh, nourish us as a mother to her child, Lord, that mm -hmm. you care for us and all areas and aspects, Lord, and that you've left nothing undone, no stone unturned, God. We thank you for your willingness to leave the 99 to seek the one, Lord, and that you sent your only begotten son to be a payment for the remission of our sins, Lord, so that we can see you again and face to face, Lord, and that we can have a pure relationship with one another, Lord, that isn't tainted by anything of the world, Lord. So we thank you for your goodness, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' amen. name, amen. amen. And amen. Well, we love you. you God bless you. And have a wonderful day. We hope you've enjoyed listening to A Day of Prayer's Morning Bible Study. This year, Pastor John and I are believing for 1,000 new partners to believe God with us and join in the work of the ministry. God is doing great things through A Day of Prayer, and we want you to be a part. If the Lord has placed on your heart to partner with us, please contact us online at adayofprayer.org. Click on the menu and select Partner. Complete the form, and we'd love to hear from you. Thank you again. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to A Day of Prayer. We trust the Lord that you are strengthened and encouraged in your relationship with Christ. Visit us on our website, adayofprayer.org, where you can check out our blog, find additional study resources, or shop the official A Day of Prayer store. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
no one comes to the Father but through me. So until next time, take care and God bless you.